Hello and welcome to my Blender to Unity Tower Defense game tutorial and in this part we're going to start creating a muzzle flash effect for our turret. So let's get started. Okay, so what's pretty clear to me early on now is that we're going to start needing to make our machine gun turret a little bit more generic and specific to um, the different type of turret that we're using. We're, we're kind of coding right now like a, for just for the machine gun turret and I don't like that so I think it's time to start breaking out some of this logic so that we can handle for instance different particle effects for different turrets. So if we spin over to Mono Develop, let's make that a little bit bigger for you there. What I think I'm going to do at the bottom here I think is at the bottom, maybe fire. What I think I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make this an abstract class and move this to a specific class for the machine gun turret or the uh, missile turret. So this is going to be quite simple. What we'll actually do is we'll just change this to um, abstract public class like so and then we'll spin down here and if we just say abstract void maybe fire Alright, let's just, just try that. Hang on a second. This is going to fail. I just want to make sure I've got the syntax correct. So if we save that and spin back in, yeah, that's not complaining, but I'd imagine Unity will complain. Where's my console? Let's bring that back up. Go to Window. Can you see console there? Where's console? Console, there you are at the bottom. Okay, let's just drag you in there. It's going to complain. Um, Virtual abstract members cannot be private. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Okay, so let's just quickly sort that out. Um, abstract public void. It should still complain though. Machine gun references runtime script in scene. Fixing. <laughs> Fixing. Right. Um, so we've got our abstract public void maybe fire here. So let's create a new class and we'll call it something like, uh, if we go to scripts here, uh, we'll call it machine turret, machine gun turret targeting system, something like that. Let's just have a think about that. Let's call it machine gun, machine gun tar targeting system. Okay. Machine gun target, machine gun targeting system. I'll spell everything right. There we go. Let's just double click that. Go into Mono Develop. I think I double clicked it. There we go, and we won't. We, now we don't need to use these because the um, uh, the parent class will do that. We just need to say now that we are extending, we are um, deriving from turret targeting system. There. Okay, we can keep those in there. Um, let's say okay to that, and it should complain. This isn't complaining, but I thought that it would say that. Um, you need to include a method. Maybe maybe um, Mono Develop doesn't do that. So let's add that uh, method in. Uh, void. Maybe. Oh, thank you. Let's just do this. Let's just go over here. Get rid of those. And that. Okay. Just cut that. Control X. And pop that into machine gun targeting system. Let's pop it at the bottom, shall we? Ah. It's not happy. Okay, so we need to make some of these values public, I guess. Current enemy health. Um, yep, yeah. current enemy health and enemy game objects. So let's just start making some of these public. I might make them protected yet, I'm not sure. Hang on, but for now we'll make them. Um, and public and what that means now is that this subclass will be able to see them. Let's just double check. Current turret st oh, current turret state, it's not happy about that. Where's oh yeah, here we go. So let's just make these public <laughs> public and public. Okay, I might tidy that up a bit later on, but for now let's just do that. What's wrong with time dot delta time? Okay, so maybe we do have to do using those. I didn't oh Okay, let's put them into for now. Good, we're off to a good start. Now I'm pretty sure, let me remind myself how this is done. One second. I need to say avoid override, don't I? Public override, that's what I need to say. So I just need to say 
um, override there. What's what's wrong with it? Okay, sorry about that. I thought I thought I'd get that wrong. Override. Fab. Now the thing I want to probably not do is them for now. Let's just do that. Alrighty, and then if we spin back into our Unity, this is a nice, very small class now, isn't it? Um, if we spin back into Unity, it should be complaining. Let's just clear that a second. We don't want in the machine in the machine gun turret now. Where are we? it's in the machine gun, isn't it? Is that script which is the turret targeting system? We're going to remove that, and we're going to add instead the machine gun targeting system. How we are we happy yet? Virtual abstract members cannot be private. Did I put private? Let's spin back over here. Maybe I'll put. Um, Abstract public. What's what's it saying is private? Is it making it up? Machine gun turret target system may be fire. Virtual abstract methods cannot be private. I didn't think I made it private. Let's have a look. Yep, I did. Override public void. Now try. And finally, warning. Uh, Game object named machine gun references runtime scripts in scene file. Fixing. Can I run this now? Let's just see if this works. Let's just see if um, it does actually start firing and reducing the health. It's turning and it's reducing the health. So it is working. So what's this error message down down here? Game object named machine gun references runtime scripts in scene file. Fixing. Well, thank you. Clear. Okay, it's gone. I don't know what that was. I'm sorry about that. Um, okay. Um, machine gun. Current enemy. See, we, did, we can see some of these values now. Um, what we should do... What we should do is probably make these protected. Let's just try a few uh, modifiers here. So, so, current enemy health. So, if we spin over to here, and we just make current enemy health protected... Let's just see if that complains. No. And if we go over to here, it's gone. I'm really annoyed about this thing here. And it's saying particles of highest inherited member. That may particle remover. We should we'll ignore that for now. I think that's a, a separate error. Um, what were the other ones? If we go to damage per second, that's another one, isn't it? We could make these um, protected. Actually, you know, let's keep that public. Let's keep that public so that we can adjust it in the ins in the inspector. Um, enemy game objects. I think I want to keep make that protected. Protected means that it's um, it's hidden to anything but the um, subclasses. Okay, no complaints there, and it's gone from here. Um, Current turret state, I think I'd definitely make that protected. Protected. Current turret state, good. What else have we got? Damage per second, turret speed, yeah, current target. Let's get rid of that one as well. I thought I had got rid of that. No, okay, protected. There we go. So, what I've done here is I've, I've um, made some of these um, uh, fields available to the subclass, but I've made it so that they cannot be seen in the inspector. I'm hoping you'll disappear. There we go. Okay, so turret speed and damage per second. I quite like those values being public, actually, for now. Um, I wish you really wish that would go away. This says here, particle removers has inherited member particle system. Use the new keyword if hiding was intended. <laughs> um, particle, so let's have a look at particle remover. Let's just try and make sure we see what this is. I've not seen this before. It is in 5, line 24. Well, there aren't line 24 lines in here. Particle remover... Oh, sorry, line 5. Sorry, line 5. Particle system, particle system. Yeah. Hides inherited member, particle... Does it now? Oh, maybe maybe it's the name. Let's call it... Let's, let's just do that and press F2. 
um, my particle my particle system and now let's see if it complains that's gone I hate this method here references runtime script in scene file fixing let's just clear it okay if we go back and just press control s and go to there and press control s and go to there and press control s and now we'll go back to unity okay that error is gone and I think we're good we've managed to create this as a subclass now that took a little bit more effort than I thought it would but okay it's working right now you'll notice this thing is actually firing away now I'll, I'll go through the particle system in a few moments time but there's one more thing I want to add to our subclass um, yeah this is annoying me game object named machine gun references runtime script in scene file fixing game object named machine gun references runtime script I'd, right I'll have to take a look at that and see if I can work out what it is I'll be right back okay right I have had a look on the internet on this and I am told that the reason this is happening is because of our class our new class in scripts um, the new machine gun turret target system because it um, inherits off of turret targeting system it's not happy because it doesn't see it as a mono behavior script annoying but I th I believe that by right clicking assets and saying re-import all rebuilding is only used if your project has been corrupted due to an internal unity bug it can take several hours to complete I doubt it's going to take several hours um, I'm going to do a re-import uh, I'll pause it and then let you know how this goes one second Well, I can tell you that that hasn't worked. That hasn't fixed it at all. It's still there. Um, so for now, I'm just going to leave it. I think it's a, um, I guess a runtime bug. I guess you could call this. I'll work on seeing if I can fix that. But so now, there's one more thing. I, well, well, two more things I want to do, and that is make this uh, um, abstract. This 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 um, subclass. I want to make it so that uh, we can tell it that it should engage in fire and it should disengage fire so when it's locked on and it's engaged then you effectively start off this particle system and when it's lost that target um, go to a new one so let's do that now so I think I've worked out what the actual issue is and I've realized the foolishness of my ways and that is that um, that error we're seeing is because I think all I need to do is actually apply this so that it applies it to the prefab as well if we go down to the prefab here that was actually showing us the t turret targeting system before so I needed to all I need to do is go over to the machine gun turret and then just click apply so that it goes to the, to the um, prefab I'm surprised that error actually occurred but now there we go you see we've actually managed to uh, avoid that error now so there we go always make sure you click apply if you're doing something to a prefab let's just watch these guys run there we go usual deal lovely right let's get on with scripting this thing out now what I was going to suggest was that we have a couple of methods in here um, that are excuse me not in this one but in our turret targeting system here uh, that, that get called in the subclass we'll make them abstract to say that we are um, uh, effectively firing or we've stopped firing so let's just add those right now so either abstract public void um, engaged target engaged target and abstract public void disengaged target something like that oh uh, we need to make this capitals don't we disengaged target all right oh I can't spell target can I oh Richard okay this is good uh, pub, uh, public public <laughs> there we go okay engaged target and disengaged target so what this means now is that um, our subclass will get caught these methods will get called we don't have to do anything with them but where, where we would want to use these would be to do something like um, in get you know to enable target um, particle effects and dis and, and disable particle effects and in fact let's do that right now so we'll just save that and we'll go back over to our machine gun targeting system and we need to run those methods don't we so let's just we need to include those methods so let's do override public void was it engaged target wasn't it uh, just do that a second then we'll do override public void disengaged target I hope that's right I really can't spell I seem to be doing the T the R instead of the T there we go alright now we've got our two methods there this is good 
The one thing I'm already a little bit concerned about is that I want to put something in start here. So if I just avoid start, okay, this will run at startup. But I think that if I go down that path there, it will override the start method here. All right. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that the um, when we call the start method here, it actually calls the superclasses start method as well. So let's make that happen. There's a special command we need to do that. One second. So let's type. What we do is we just type base dot start. Start coroutine. No, 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 no. Like so. It doesn't like that. I thought that were. Is it called start? It is called start, isn't it? Ah. Uh, I suspect we have to make this public. Now we could probably call that. There we go. Should we try making it protected? Yep, it's happy with that as well. Okay, so what I want to do in here, uh, the reason I'm putting this into start here is what I want to try and do is, um, without going into too much detail yet, because we'll get onto the particle system in a minute, is that I've created a uh, a muzzle flash is empty here and if I just run this now I'll show you we've got a couple of particle effects underneath it what I want to be able to do is just um, disable it or enable it depending on um, whether it's on target whether it's engaged or not okay so we will um, we will get a link to that let's do that now and we can do that by it's actually got yes it hasn't got any spaces in it so that's quite good so let's do this we'll go back to our um, class here and we'll just say up here Game object um, muzzle flash effects empty if you like, um, and here we should be able to say muzzle equal equals um, game object dot get get component get no 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 it's get how is it? It's get. Excuse me, guys. I will find it one second. Apologies. I think I did the same thing last time. I think we've been through this before, haven't we? It's transform. I forgot that same thing last time. Transform dot find. That's it. And then we say um, brackets quotes muzzle flash in this case. Okay, because that's what I called it. Okay. Last spin back. So let me just let me just take you through what we'll need to do in order to make this work. So what I've, I've done under the machine gun here, we've still got our machine gun targeting system, and I've created an empty here. Uh, you should do the same and call it muzzle flashes. You can call it something else, but if you call it muzzle flashes, don't worry about these particle effects yet. But under machine gun, create a uh, an empty called muzzle flashes. All right, um, and then back into our script here, we'll say muzzle flash effects empty equals that. And now what we can do here is say muzzle flash effects empty dot uh, set active to true and then we'll say disengage target set active to false okay now that should be good enough nothing's calling these yet you put notes in our in our super class so we'll work on that in a minute Okay, let's just have a quick recap. We've um, added a couple of these methods here just to say, you know, uh, the, the target's been engaged, let the subclass know, or it's been disengaged, let the, let the subclass know. And what we've done is we've created an empty that's going to store our particle effects, and um, uh, we know we've called it muzzle flashes, so we're storing that as a reference, and then that reference is going to get to set to active or, or, or inactive, depending on whether it's engaged or disengaged. So that's good. So let's go back to our turret targeting system here. And you'll notice there's a number of places where we set the turret state. What I think I will do is I'll add another method down at the bottom here. Um, uh, we avoid set current turret state brackets turret state state, something like that, right? And we'll say, to start with, we'll just say current turret I did this last time, the current turret, help me out, equals state. All right. Okay, that's good. And we'll, let's just go through where we've, where we've actually set this now. Um, let's, let's just do a little search, shall we, for current turret state. And every time we find that, obviously not where it's uh, 
declared but here we go so for a start this is one here so we're going to have here set current turret state where are you brackets okay we're going to have to do this a few times so let's find the next one where's my where's my uh, there it is okay these these are these are actually checking the state so they're not setting it good this one here is so let's do the same thing set current turret state let's just put that in a uh, let's copy that in so we can just do that everywhere else and then we can just do start doing this and anywhere else yep a few places I hope you can see what I'm doing here I'm you're thinking why are you doing this why don't you just set it and I'll show you why in a few seconds let's just make sure we do this if we don't do this everywhere uh, we need to set it in here okay that looks like everywhere doesn't it so I don't want to see current turret state equals anywhere we can do evaluators on it that's fine but I don't want to, want to be seeing it manually set in anywhere other than here good all right current turret state equals state now what we'll say here is if brackets uh, we can use either current turret state is turret state can't spell dot engaged Hang on. Um, we're going to run engage target okay and that will call the subclasses method else if brackets current turret state equals turret state actually no let's do this let's just say else <laughs> else squiggle because anything else we don't want it to engage to we will say um, disengage target okay it's going to call it every time that's going to be good enough for now quick recap then so we've, we've moved anything anytime we want to set the state we are going to put that in a method now all right and we're going to say if you um, set that as as before, just set it to what it is, but we're gonna do a little check at the end here to say yeah, if it's if we're engaged now, run the engage target method, and if we are disengaged, we'll run the disengage target method. Now, again, I'm I'm kind of giving you a sneak preview of how the um particle effect works, but I think we've got all the logic in place now. Um I think. <laughs> should we just should we just run it? I'll just do control S, let's go back over to Unity and see if this works. Okay, so muzzle flashes here we go. A cool compiler is yes. Okay. Find object of type. No, I've done that wrong, haven't I? It's find. It's not find object of type, is it? Transform dot find. That's it, isn't it? Let's go back here. And what was that? That's weird, isn't it? That it didn't, um, or was it just, oh, I'll tell you what it might be, it might be that. Let's just check, hang on. Yeah, it's, tr it's lowercase, gosh. Gosh, it's trying to catch me out. It's the, it's not the static method, it's the, uh, it's the uh, instance method, for those of you that understand that, lowercase t. Right, okay. How are we doing now? It cannot implicitly, yeah, all right, okay. So we just do as game object. There, are we nearly there? Okay, so this is doing a search for this in uh, this game object in its children. All right. Although is it? Yes, it must be because it's using this transform here. Okay, right. Why well, is transform dot finder? And what have we got now? Cannot convert transform to Unity Engine game object. All right. Uh, I know why. I think what that that returns that returns the um, transform. So we just say dot game object like that gosh that's quite confusing isn't it so you can find a transform <laughs> underneath why is there no game object dot find sorry I'm gonna have a moan now there's a transform dot find so you do transform dot find and then you find oh right anyway I can complain about that that seems a bit back to front to me but there we go all right so we, what we're doing is we're finding a, a transform somewhere in our uh, hierarchy and we are getting the game object that belongs to which means we can set it to active or inactive people there we go. What's this one here? Hides inherited member. Let's just take a look at this. Machine gun hides inherited member turret. Hang on. Does it? 
But we've done, let's just call it public there. Then. Let's just call it uh, protected. Is it happy now? It's not happy now. So let's try doing it as public. I think there, I think this is fine. I don't know how to stop that method appearing because because what 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 it's saying is that hang on, you've overridden the um superclasses start, so um it's not gonna run to the, the 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 superclasses start method, but we are because we're calling this method here, so I'm gonna have a little play with that, see if I can come up with a smarter method uh smart way of doing that, but for now we're safe. Let's run it now. Okay, the first thing I've noticed is that it hasn't disabled the muzzle flashes. Have we got any errors? Yes, we have. Right, let's have a look at these errors. Object reference not set to an instance of object, so it couldn't find muzzle flashes by the looks of things. Muzzle flashes. Let's just quickly do a bit of a debug then. Let's have a look. Oh, muzzle flash, look. Muzzle flashes. There we go. Let's try now. I don't know. Do you, do you guys appreciate um, me fixing these things on the fly, or would you prefer to see? I think that's failed again, hasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Like I say, do you guys prefer to see me fixing stuff on the fly, or do you um, uh, prefer to see a completed project? I don't know. Let me know in your comments if this is the sort of thing that gets on your nerves. Then let me know. Let's have a quick look at that script again. We're saying transform dot find. Let's start with. Let's just start with this. Let's say transform TF. Okay. It's just it's just um equals transform. Let's go back to that one. No, I'm gonna use the lowercase one. Transform dot find. See it's got find child there. I think that's what it might be. Let's just quickly try that here. child okay control s let's try that see how that gets on yeah clear that up and run it again no it's still not finding it it's sad, but what this is it's saying is it can't find the method muzzle flashes so let me quickly try one thing just to to test this out we'll say transform um, tf equals transform dot find child Muzzle flashes. Definitely spelt it right, yeah? Muzzle flashes. And it's a subclass, and this is it's the machine gun targeting system. And that's what we're in, right? Machine gun, yeah. Muzzle flashes. And let's just do a debug.log tf. Alright, that'll just show us if that's actually found it. Alright. This is still going to, in fact, I might even just do that for now. Um, all right, let's run it again. Where's the debug statement? Ah, right. Then that suggests to me that base dot start is running, and these aren't running. Let's just quickly do a debug dot log. That's interesting. I hadn't realised that was going to happen. Debug dot log. Hello. Okay, let's just see if that appears. No. <laughs> right. In which case, in which case, what I will do is I will go back to my turret targeting system and we will have a, another method called, um, this is an abstract, so we'll call this something like um abstract void um turret start public ab abstract public void really wish i could suppose to say turret start all right and then what we'll do here is up here we won't have a start method anymore we'll just have uh, under the start here we'll just run turret start all right, and then what we can do in here is we can just call this turret start. Okay, and there's no confusion then. All right, so that way we don't need to do that because that's going to get called. 
all right because that's in the in the superclass I think that might work a bit more friendly me a bit more friendly let's try that back to here what's up with it turret style hides inherited abstract member what did I save it machine gun turret style hides inherited abstract member oh it's override excuse me sorry it's override isn't it override oh that's what I needed to put that's what I need to put in the start method I'm gonna keep this for now I'm gonna keep this for now because I actually think I prefer this it's cleaner and it's clearer then isn't it um, what I should have done is just put override in there sorry to those of you that are probably screaming at your screens um, now let's yeah there we, oh yeah okay that's fine we'll clear that off and let's try again all right so it has still firing it's still saying that not an in instance of an object gosh we are uh, there's no debug statement either why is that public void all right now I'm getting crossed now <laughs> um that should have called right turret start here T protected void let's just quickly call yeah we can call, we can t we can set that back to void start again I don't think that's going to be it no nope. um bear with me guys let me just pause it now otherwise you guys are going nuts let me just see if I can work out what this is one second yes I've worked out what it is <laughs> and it's slightly confusing what it is is that turret start is being called here but can you see this thing here it's saying set current state it's running that before um, the uh, machine gun targeting system turret start gets run so what's happening is the this isn't getting called yet so the the actual empty isn't being found crikey so what we're going to need to do I think is go back to what we had before which is start all right and then we'll do base dot start very annoying but I think I know why that's not working we need to go back to here and set that to um, public okay how are we getting on and then we don't need to do that anymore all right we're almost there we're almost there I think go back to my excuse me go back to this one and we don't want to run we want to do <laughs> we want to do that first and then that crikey right yes and that way so we'll get our effects then we can run the base method start all right and then our um, effects empty will be created let's just see come on work for me now I'm getting cross now yeah what yeah what's wrong with that um, um okay yes 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 okay um we need to set it I think it's a virtual in in here I never remember which way around this is public let's try virtual there now let's have a look machine gun turret does not okay yes good point let's remove that down here turret start we're no longer using that I think oh yeah that's that's the error we saw before so let's go for it now come on okay the good news people I think that's actually worked it's, can you see it's disabled it there now what it's going to do it's going to rotate towards it and engage gosh my apologies if that was long-winded and complicated you have just gone on a journey with me but I, I think we can safely say we fixed it and you can see what it's doing I might just actually just actually make it maximize on play yeah one second and then we can have a good look here we go Okay, it's seen, it blows it up, stops firing, continues firing. We sh uh, next video is going to be sound effects because it, you know, I think it needs it now. You can see it's doing the job, perfect. We have done all of the coding we need to do now. So now let's get on with the final step, which is actually the particle effect. Let's do that now. Okay, for the sake of your own sanity, I won't make you go through another one of those terrible setting up and trying to work out what's going on scenarios. I'll, I will talk you through the particle effect that I have actually set up. 
you should have created this muzzle flashes under the machine gun now and what we're going to do is we're going to right click that and just do particle system okay and then what you need to do is you need to pin that over to the well either of them actually doesn't matter okay about about there it's just in front of the gun and then just if you go to the side view make sure it's well it has look that's perfect it's done it for us here but you may need to move that up or down Okay, and we can adjust that position shortly, but let's just go for that for now. All right, I'll delete this now. Okay, but then let's, then let's look at this right one, and let's just enable it again. Did I do that? Yes, I did. It's not showing as enabled. There we go. Let's go through the settings. So we've got duration of one. Uh, looping is absolutely correct. Uh, no start delay. Um, start lifetime very short, 0 0.05. Tweak, tweak this to, to your liking. I like the way that looks, about 0 0.05. Um, a random speed between 0 0.75 and 1.25. Um, a start size of sort of between. That's, that's hardly worth it, is it? Let's just um, let's just try 0 0.05 and 0 0.08 or something, and one and 0 0.1, 0 0.1. You can tweak this. That's that's um yeah 0 0.8 then maybe 0 0.8. What? Oh no, 0 0.08. Okay. Uh, don't worry about rotation or randomized direction. Uh, the color, I you can also you can make that white. It doesn't make a lot of difference. Okay, don't so you can leave that. No gravity modifiers. Um, all this stuff I think is default. Play on awake, that's fine. Um, max particles, keep it low, keep it ten. I'll show you if you do a hundred, it starts. It doesn't actually matter, does it? Maybe it was down under emission. Yes, emission rate. There we go, fifteen. All right. So if you do uh, twenty, something like that. The lower you make this. The more kind of random it looks. Let's just show you five. You see, it's sort of just that's that's. You could almost use that rate there to to use as an upgrade. You see, so five maybe is level one, and then ten is level two, and then twenty or something. That's so really going for it on level three. But yeah, let's just set that for ten. No, let's set it for five. I like that. Okay. All right. Um, that doesn't look quite right. Let's try let's try eight. You can see this is the thing. Yeah, let's do eight. That looks good. Um, because it's you know it's not meant to be too um, ferocious at the level. Uh, the shape is a cone um, with a small angle and a small radius, so it should be pointing outwards, as it were, to forward towards the um, along the along the z-axis. Um, radius of 0 0.01, so nice and small. If you make that bigger, it'll just it'll just create it in random areas around there. You can maybe try, let's just try 0 0.02 or something. It's a little bit more random, isn't it? 0 0.01. Let's go for that. Made from the base. All right. The only other couple of things you need to do is color over lifetime. I'm pretty sure what I did was um, add another little one in here. I'll just show you how I did that. So I'll just click anywhere and make that 255. All right. So then basically what's happening is it's staying alive and at the very end it's dropping off. All right. I think I might have done the, the color as well. Yeah. So I set the black at the end, white at the start, black at the end. So basically fading out on that as well. And size over lifetime. You know I like to play with this. Um, I don't know how much I... Yeah, you can tweak this. It looks as though I ended up not bothering, but you might want to play around with that just so that it gets a bit smaller at the end. Let's just uncheck that. And I think that's it. The uh, the renderer is the uh, fireball. The material is the fireball, uh, same as we created for the explosion. Okay, so we're reusing that. And I think that's all we do. So if I just uh, what I'll do now is I'll delete the left hand one. Yep, that's fine. And we will uh, click on this one, do Control D, and then just drag that over to the same point over there. Okay, should you don't have to worry about the being on the y axis, it should have kept that. And then we'll just we'll just rename that to muzzle flash left. Okay, and what's happening here, by the way, if you weren't if you weren't clear, is that what we've done, because we've put this muzzle flashes um under the machine gun, and our machine gun has a script called machine gun targeting system. If we go back to our machine gun targeting system here, we've got these methods that um no, yeah, this one here, we've got these methods that set the uh, empty to enabled or disabled, okay, and that, but thereby disabling its children as well. Just to show, just to prove that to you, oh, you can't prove it in the scene view. Can I disable it? Yeah, if you disable it, you can see it disappears. Scene view kind of um, only really creates the particle effect if it has to, so it's, it's better to watch that in game view. All right, does that make sense? Hope so. Let's have a look now. This will be exactly the same as before. I will almost certainly create a, a Unity package for this that you can download and have a play with. 
Okay, this is cool. Right, thank you for watching. I think we're actually done here, here with this tutorial. Thank you again. I'm appreciating all of the likes and subscribes. You guys are brilliant. I'm, I'm getting more and more subscribers every day. Question, the next video, would you like me to work on sound effects or would you like me to work on uh, getting the other turrets out there, so the missile turret and the laser turret? Let me know in the comments. If you'd rather I was working on some sound effects, then let me know. The sound effects should be quite a short tutorial um, whereas the uh, additional turrets are going to need a little bit more work so let me know what your thoughts are thank you as always catch you next time goodbye